Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. So a little while ago, we had a series of videos on multi-arm bandits on this channel. And they do this really cool thing that you would naturally do as a human being where they balance between exploring different options and then exploiting the options that have been proven to do well. Now, in this video, I want to do a very natural extension from multi-arm bandits called contextual bandits. And I really like this because it builds upon the fundamentals that we learn in the multi-arm bandit videos. And it also has really obvious, I think, very apparent applications to the real world. So let's get into it with an example, as we do on this channel. Let's say you are a math professor. There's 100 students in your class, and you're trying to figure out what kind of lesson plan is best for the students. And you're deciding between an intuition-first lesson plan, where you motivate every lesson with some intuition, you don't go into the math right away, versus a lesson plan where you start with the math, and then you build up the intuition along the way. So intuition first or math first, which one is better for the students? Now you're going to be measuring the success of these lesson plans based on a daily quiz that you give at the end of every single lesson. Yes, if I was a student in this class, I would also be annoyed by a daily quiz at the end of every single lesson, but hey, roll with it for the video, okay? So based on the quiz scores, that's going to tell you which lesson plan is doing better. So you remember there's this thing called multi-arm bandits that could be helpful here because we're trying to explore between the two plans, but then also along the way pick the one that's proven to do better over time. And so you go with an epsilon greedy strategy where you set epsilon equal to 10%. Sounds kind of fancy. All that means is that on any given day, there's a 10% chance that you randomly select one of the two lesson plans, 50-50 chance. And then there's a 90% chance that you're going to go with the lesson plan who has historically, as you go through the days, given the best average quiz score. So on day one, you have no data to work with. There's nothing to exploit. So all you can do is explore. Let's say you randomly 50-50 shot, pick the intuition first lesson plan. You administer that lesson to the students. You have them take the quiz at the end of the day and you grade all the quizzes and you find that that got an 80% out of 100% on the quizzes. Cool. So the next day you run your epsilon greedy strategy and let's say it tells you to pick the uh, other lesson plan, the math-based lesson plan. You administer a math-based lesson to the students, you have them take the quiz, you calculate the average quiz score, and you get a 60%. Okay, so it's lower. So if we're exploiting on any given day, we're going to pick the intuition plan. And let's say that's exactly what happens the next day. Our epsilon greedy strategy tells us to exploit. We pick the one that has the best average, which is just the intuition-based plan right now. We administer that lesson, do the quiz. Let's say we get 78%. The next day, let's say we are exploring and we pick the math face plan and we get a 61% average score. So even after just four days, because we're working with a pretty healthy sample size of 100 students here, we already have a pretty good idea of which lesson plan is better. It seems like the intuition based lesson plan is giving us eh, somewhere around 80% on the quizzes and the math based lesson plan is giving us somewhere around 60% on the quizzes. So it seems pretty reasonable. Sounds like your work is done here. So you doze off to bed that night. Now, as you're dozing off to bed that night, a thought occurs to you. There are 100 students in this class. That's 100 different educational backgrounds, 100 diverse perspectives. Why are we enforcing a one-size-fits-all solution on the entire class? Why are we saying that everybody in the class is going to get a intuition-first lesson plan or everyone's going to get a math-first lesson plan? Shouldn't there be some room for personalization based on what the student, what that student actually needs? By using the simple multi-arm bandit, are we simply just appealing to the majority? And could the quiz score get even higher than 80% if we tailor the lesson plan to what works for a specific student? So we hop out of bed and we think about what needs to change. Right now, in our multi-arm bandit setup, we are picking the best lesson plan based on the average quiz score across all students. We want to change that. We want to pick the best lesson plan based on some context, based on some vector of information we know about each student. Let's call that V sub i. So V sub i is going to be some vector of numerical information that we know about any given student. This can be anything, but for the purposes of this video, think about things like that student's GPA, how many credits that student is currently enrolled in, how the student did in previous courses that were math-based or intuition-based. So a bunch of context or a bunch of information that we think is going to be helpful in determining which lesson plan a student is more tailored towards. So the next Monday, we start from scratch. So forget everything we learned from the multi-arm bandit experiment. Let's just say we're starting from scratch here. We start in a little bit of a different way. We're going to divide up our 100 students into two groups of 50. And one group of 50 is going to get a math-based lesson plan that day, and the other group is going to get an intuition-based plan that day. 
Now I want to note something here, which is this is already logistically a little bit harder. It was easier just to give everybody the same lesson plan. Now we have to worry about kind of where to put these students. Maybe we have to hire another professor who's going to give one lesson while you're giving the other lesson. So this is not a trivial thing. We have to think about the additional logistical challenges that come with what we're explaining right now, which is contextual bandits versus the much more simple uh, multi-arm bandits. But we'll come back to that a little bit later. So 50 students get one lesson plan, 50 students get another, all 100 students get the same quiz at the end of the day, and then we take those quizzes home and we get to work implementing our new contextual bandit strategy. Now, when we get home, what we realize we're working with is that we have a vector of information, V sub i, about each of these 100 students. So remember, that's GPA, credits, how you did in previous courses, all this context. We also have a binary variable for which treatment they got that day. So let's say it's one if they got the intuition-based plan and zero if they got the math-based plan that day. So that's going to be 50-50. And we also have a response variable, which is going to be their quiz score that day. So call that R sub i. Now, the easiest thing we can do here is just train a linear regression, which is using this x sub i context vector, which is a concatenation of the student's context vector v sub i, and this binary variable, whether they got a intuition or math-based plan that day. So we're trying to learn a linear function, which is going to map those x sub i's. So we're trying to learn these coefficients of the linear function that are going to map these x sub i's, this context vector for the student, to the response to the quiz score that they got that day. And this linear function is going to allow us to predict, it's going to allow us to give a predicted quiz score based on the context vector, which again contains student information and also which lesson plan that student got. So we go ahead and train that linear regression and we have that function ready to go. Now on day two, we implement our epsilon greedy strategy, but it works in a more nuanced way. So every given student has a 10% chance, as we have in our epsilon greedy strategy, of getting a random lesson plan. So first we just flip a biased coin. If it comes back with 10%, then that student's just going to get one of the two lesson plans at random. That's the easy case. Now, with the other 90% probability, we are going to pick the lesson plan for that particular student's context vector who is expected to give us the best reward, to give us the highest quiz score. And here's what that looks like for a particular student. We're going to have our v sub i context vector, and we're also going to have two choices for the binary variable if they get a math-based plan or an intuition-based plan. Now, we can form an x sub i for the math-based option and for the intuition-based option, and for both of these vectors, we can feed them into the linear model that we trained last night, and that's going to give us two different response vectors, two different estimated quiz scores based on that setup. And whichever one has the higher estimated quiz score is the treatment we're going to give. And now that treatment might be different from the next student we do this for. And folks, this story we just told is the crux and the power of contextual bandits over multi-arm bandits. In multi-arm bandits, we end up just applying a blanket strategy to everybody. In contextual bandits, we actually care about the specific context of each unit or each student in this example. And based on that context, we're going to tailor the action we take either a math-based or intuition-based plan, to that specific context, to that individual context. And I'll note here the method we're using to get the estimated reward. Here we're just using a linear function for simplicity, but it can really be as simple or as complex as you want. You can use a deep learning model here, you can use a linear regression, you can use something in between. So the method is up to you, and that will affect how this works in the nitty-gritty. But at a high level, there's going to be some way to estimate the expected reward based on the different actions you can take for a particular context. And folks, we just repeat that. So on day two, we ascribed actions based on our epsilon greedy strategy and also based on our linear model from the night before. We give a common quiz to all the students, we get the quiz scores back, and we just train a new linear model using all the data we have so far. And we just repeat, we repeat, we repeat, and eventually we're gonna get to a point where we really, really well understand how any given context, how any given student's context, is going to tell us which action to take, whether that student needs to get an intuition-based plan or whether that student needs to get a math-based plan. And after running this for several weeks, we end up getting a overall average 90% accuracy, which was a 10% lift from just using the standard multi-arm bandit. We get that extra 10% lift by tailoring the action to the specific student in this contextual bandit setup. Now, before we close the video, I want to talk about the trade-offs because we talked about all the awesome things that contextual bandits do over multi-arm bandits, but there's going to be complications as well. One we already called out, the logistical ones. You had to split your class in half. There's a lot more moving pieces here, and so that's something we have to think about. Another one is just how long it takes for this to stabilize. 
When we had a simple multi-arm bandit and we were just giving the same treatment to everybody, it's not going to take as many days for us to figure out if we're just going to give one blanket strategy, which one that should be. It will just take us a week or even less with this 100 student sample size we're working with. In a contextual bandit, there's a lot more moving parts again. We have to think about these context vectors we have about each student. We're working on a per uh, student basis or more realistically on a per context vector kind of basis. And so it's going to take longer to stabilize. It's not going to take just a week for us to understand the best action per context vector. It's going to take longer. There's a lot more data to work with. There's a lot more variables, a lot more parameters we need to fit. And so it's going to take longer. And that's a trade-off we have to think about as well. So that's basically, in a nutshell, the difference between multi-arm bandits and contextual bandits. There's a lot more to say here. If you're more interested, please leave any comments in the section below. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this. And I'll see all you wonderful, wonderful people 